Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. I'm outside this morning. The sun will be coming up over here. You might see it. It was behind the clouds and now it's going to shine on me, which is great. So absorb the good vibrational sunlight energy. It's going to screw up my light a little bit. Now I'm going to be all shadowy, but you know, that's okay. We're okay with that. <laughs> I'm wearing my sunshine yellow sweatshirt from Walt Disney World because you guys know if you follow me on Fairy Grasshopper, or my other YouTube channel or on Instagram, Bridget Inspired, that I love Walt Disney World. I especially love the immersive hotel experiences and just the awesome pools and palm trees and just all that warm energy and the creativity and all that good stuff. So getting to the main event. I was driving in to get some coffee this morning and I heard a song on the radio which helped to just secure the channeling session for today, which was a song, Somebody to Love, by Queen, so Freddie Mercury, and he made the same song choice yesterday when I was driving. I had like a five minute drive and just running into town and that song was on the radio when I was flipping the channels. and. So two days in a row, same song, I'm thinking, yeah. And last night I actually told my husband, hey, I think I need to talk with Freddie. I wanna talk with Freddie because I wanna ask him about, I need some um, insight about empaths. So do you guys know what empath is? Do you know what that means? I think you do if you've been watching my videos. It basically is the way that you're intuitive by feeling. So it's like the emotions that you receive. Like when you walk into a room and all of a sudden you have this overwhelming feeling. Yeah, it's your heart space working as an empath, which is you being psychic in a way, being psychic with your heart, with your emotions and your feelings. And so kind of getting that vibe from somebody, picking up on their energy, that's your heart that is working as a psychic channel for you, as an intuitive channel. So. I know it's really common to have that experience because newsflash, being psychic is not uncommon. It's totally a normal part for you to be intuitive, okay, to have intuitions. It's not so normal to follow them apparently. That's a really something we really struggle with as humans and me too, just because I, I, I'm uh, psychic and I, I, I work in psychic ways and channel and all that stuff doesn't mean that I just magically follow all the instruction. Look at the sun, isn't it gorgeous? Uh, okay. All right, so we're gonna channel with Freddie Mercury. He is one of the experts for me for the afterlife about clairsentience, which is the psychic gift of sensing feeling, which is for empaths. So if Freddie Mercury was an expert subject matter expert in the afterlife, I would say he is definitely empath. Totally, completely expert on the empath, on the sensitive type. And that that's not specifically reflective of who he was in the human life, but I'm just sharing with you that these celebrities, they kind of have, sometimes they have focus or they have expertise that comes through as a spirit guide from the afterlife. So if they're coming in to you if you're having a lot of experiences with Freddie Mercury specifically, just know that you're an empath and if you wanna learn more about that, you can Google it, you can check out on YouTube, there's other psychics and, and, and other um, development, self-development types that will talk to you about what empath means and also clairsentience is another way that you can look that up or highly sensitive person, you can look that information up too. Okay, so if you want more info, go ahead and check that out. Can I have some water this morning? Hmm. Got to balance out the caffeine, right? And if you're here, and if right now at this point, in this four minutes in, and you're like, hey, Bridget, get to the channeling. Well, maybe you're really not the kind of person that I want watching my channels. Let's just be honest about that, because that means you maybe just don't like me, you just like what I can do for you. And, and I'm, quite frankly, I'm really not interested in that kind of relationship. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just not. <laughs> so I'm going to wait another maybe 30 seconds and you can stop watching if you're just one of those kind of 
people that's really not interested in the whole experience, you know. Let's just do that. Let's have a drink of water. I'm just going to clear energetically because I'm an empath and psychically I just literally stood my ground and told you guys, hey, if you're not here because you like my style of connection, then there's the door. Goodbye. Wow, was that harsh? That was kind of harsh, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But you know what? I'm kind of tired of people pleasing. It's really not worth it, especially like when I'm doing stuff and I'm pouring my heart out here, empath to empath, and sharing all my spiritual connections and all that for free. Like, I'm not getting paid for this. And I know there's this illusion that YouTube like pays you a bunch of money. It doesn't. It's totally not worth it. <laughs> It's just unless you like have a uh, hundred thousand subscribers, which we do not. It's not a huge source of income. I mean, I'm I'm very grateful for any kind of ad revenue I might get from YouTube. Let me just be clear. But a hundred dollars a month is not worth all the energy, time, effort, and dollar per hour. If I divide it by dollar per hour, I'd probably feel depressed. It's not about the money. Okay. It's about the relationship and the connection and the inspiration. And I love you guys. I love you. Those of you who are still watching. So now let's talk to Freddie Mercury. All right, Freddie, how do you feel about that intro, my friend? I'm going to kind of face the sun because you feel so sunny to me and you're so loving. He says, I think it's about time. He says, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. He's like, I think it's about time you stood up for yourself, Bridget. Stop being a doormat. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, you should talk, Mr. Mercury. Didn't you have the disease to please? Didn't you have what Oprah calls the disease to please? He says, no, really, no. He says, but it is hard to, to balance your feelings when you know it could hurt people. When you know what you say or what you share, even though it means a lot to you, this is Freddie Mercury talking, it means a lot to you you know it, it could have this this effect on other people and he's talking he's kind of referring to like his family as far as his sexuality goes and um, being who he is and changing his name and stuff he says i know that that could and would potentially have a negative impact on my family that they would feel hurt he said um but sooner or later you realize that holding back who you are so that other people don't feel uncomfortable isn't your responsibility it's it's he says it's part of the problem it really is part of the problem it's part of a pattern he says it's part of a pattern that that keeps you small it keeps you unhappy for yourself it keeps you knowing that you are harboring resentment inside and you're not even he's like you're not even giving other people you're not even giving the public the opportunity to love you and embrace you and accept you for who you are fully by not fully being yourself and not by fully, you know, speaking up for what you believe as true for you. And he says, um, this is interesting. I knew we were going to talk a lot. So he's giving me information that's, um, it, it may not sound like his personality or persona from the human life, like you would know him, but from the afterlife, remember as this expert of empath and, and, and sensitivity, he is, it's like downloaded into my heart and I'm sharing this. So we're having this conversation, this psychic conversation. And this is probably you guys, really, for those of you who are mega Freddy fans, this is probably how he communicates with you and you question it and it's natural to doubt or question it. But let me tell you, this is true. This is true. It's a download right to your heart. It's direct to your heart. And that's how he communicates. That's why we're talking to him about empath stuff. Because I am exhausted by people pleasing. And I thought, honestly, Bridget, me, that I, I wasn't a people pleaser as much anymore as I used to be, you know, but I really am. Still, even after three plus years on Above Life channel on YouTube, it is tough to say how I really feel about, um, I don't want how do I say this? Like, I don't want to like lash out or dump on people or, or make um, Above Life Channel specifically a platform for me to express myself and my personal beliefs or things. That's why I have Fairy Grasshopper too. I have another channel that's really personally me. 
and me intuitively and me as a real psychic life. Like this is what real psychic life is like. Let me give you some tips and some tools. So I, I, I've kept Above Life Channel very specific to afterlife celebrity insight and things that inspire me. So I share that with you guys and topics that I know are relevant and important for you and for us all that we all benefit from. But I've really tried to keep my personal, as much as possible, my, well, how do I say this? I can't separate my personality from my work. I just can't do it. And I've tried to kind of, you know, have kind of a, a border there, not a boundary, but a border like a like a line, kind of like, oh, be very professional and be. And you've seen probably you guys over time, especially if you've watched Above Life Channel over time, go back and watch some of the original Freddie Mercury on the playlist. Although he has such a bold personality that I can't not play, be playful with him and my personality comes out too is now I'm just like kind of tired of of the the kind of unrealistic like demands almost. It almost feels like demands because it's an empath. I feel the energy of people watching and this desperation for me to tell them answers and give them direct access to you, Freddie, for example, direct access for you. And I'm the only way they can do that. And that's not, I don't believe in that. Like, I think that's wrong to present myself as the only way you can connect. That's not true at all. And at the same time, I also don't want to be a doormat for people in their, like I get emails and I get comments and this desperation energy of like this despair and this, oh my gosh, if you don't channel Freddie this week, I'm just gonna, you know, I just, I just can't help myself. And like putting all this, like giving me all this, this energy of this, the, of people, people give me all their problems. And I'm like, no, that's okay. I can't, I can't, believe me, I got enough to deal with myself. I don't need everybody else's. And yet at the same time, like when I work in private session with people, I love, I'm like, I'm all there for them. I'm all in. Why? Because they're all in. And on YouTube, people aren't all in. People can have different degrees and it's okay to have different degrees of interest and connection. I'm super okay with that. If you're a casual viewer of Above Life Channel, totally fine with that. Let's be clear. I get that sometimes you're really into it and sometimes you're not and it's fine. Come and go as you please. It's fine. It's totally fine. I'm really cool with that. I'm really fine with that. <clears throat> That's not what I'm talking about specifically when I say taking a stand and like, no, I'm not going to do things the way other people want me to do them because they have demands and expectations. I'm like, this is a free service. <laughs> you know, it's like, what? It's like, why do I care? Why do I care so much about people who are complainers or who? I, I don't know. I, the answer to that is I don't know. You know, I guess I get equally, Freddie, I get equally as much love and I'm not, and I'm not like stressed about Above Life Channel. I'm not feeling pressure to channel. I just, I'm really kind of over the, please, please, please channel this person. Please, please. I'm like, what? Oh, no, no. And you might be being funny, like commenters, some commenters might be being funny and being like, oh, please, I just would be so over the moon if you would do this. I'm like, yeah, well, I have videos specifically where people can submit requests, but I'm just not that interested in meeting people's needs randomly. <laughs> I want to be in like meaningful relationship based where it's equal and there's a uh, shared value and like I want that. And I think everybody else, you guys, we deserve that. Okay. And I think I need to be a little more, mm, I think I need to little, be a little more discerning. Maybe that's it. I don't know, Freddie, help me here. So people are pleasing, it's a problem many of us have. And I didn't realize that feeling resentful when people ask me to channel people <laughs> over and over and over and like, you would not believe the emails I get in desperation and, oh, please contact this and I don't have any money, but I really need you to do this for me. And I'm like, what, number one, Above Life Channel and Fairy Grasshopper give you so much insight and inspiration and encouragement to live your life. And I know there's hard days and I know everybody needs help, but I am not able to just, like I have other, hmm, I don't know how to say this. That's unrealistic to expect me to just randomly respond to randomly. Okay. 
how do we handle this feeling of knowing we're going to disappoint people? Like I'm doing this channeling right now and I know that there's going to be half, there's going to be a chunk of people that watch it that are going to be so disappointed because I didn't just focus on you as your life as Freddie from Queen and instead I'm talking to you from a higher perspective. And to say that I don't care about those people and where they're at is wrong. That's false because I do care. I genuinely care, you guys. I genuinely care. I do. And I want you guys to see how this works for me. Like I have these push pulls and these tugs and I have these challenges myself and these patterns myself. And I'm recognizing that the way other people feel, it matters to me. But I'm also realizing that I don't have control over it, how they feel. Like I can't make people happy. I can't give them contentment. I can't make their lives better and fix things. I can't do that. I can't even do that for my own family, my own kids. My, myself is the only place that I have that power. And so how can I lead by example? You need to give us some advice, Fred. Fred, you need to give me advice. And, I'll, and my friends here, they need it too because we care about what other people think of us. We, don't we? Yes, yes, we do. It's okay to admit that because I do too. Although I have to say, three over three years on YouTube now, and by the way, it's May, so it's, it is three years for me. Hey, cheers to that. Cheers. Being on such a public platform, you really get, you have to quickly get used to a lot of negative comments, emails, feedback. I haven't had any death threats, so that's a positive. I don't think I have. I've had a, I've had a stalker. I've had actually two different people that like... It's interesting because people love you. They like are super devoted, love you. And then as soon as you do something or say something that they maybe don't agree with or you're not giving enough to them, or all of a sudden you're not paying enough attention to them or responding enough to their messages, all of a sudden they get really angry and then they all of a sudden you're like devil incarnate. <laughs> like you're the worst person ever. And then they start sharing how bad you are and how mean you are and blah, blah, blah. It's not true, but it sucks because when you're a public person, you know, they're spreading like lies from their perspective. Well, I shouldn't say lies. Maybe they are very hurt and offended because I'm not, you know, giving them attention. But it's like, that's not, I can't do that. I want to give attention to the people who are awesome and lovely. And some of you guys, by the way, are so lovely and I do adore you. That's why I like heart your comments because there's so many. I'm so blessed with lots of comments <laughs> that I get. I don't have a lot of time to personally respond back, but I love I have little hearts. I do read your stuff, but I love it. And I love you guys and I appreciate that. But what do we do? Come on, give me advice. <laughs> that doesn't help. He says, you're doing it. You got to talk about it. He says, the first thing is, is you got to realize. He's like, you already know what you can't do. You, you just said it. He's like, you just said it, Bridget. You just said it. You can't help everybody. You just can't help people. And you can't help them help themselves. Like you can't do it for them. You can't do anything for somebody else. You can't give them. You can't fill that space, he says. This is interesting because he uses the word trauma, which I don't know that I've heard you use before because you specifically, in my vocabulary, you chose that word and put it out here. Like you pulled it right out of my heart and put it out here. You can't fill something inside of someone to replace the trauma that they feel. They've been in relationships where they felt abused, misunderstood, not accepted for who they are, and they're looking for some kind of hope and they see that in you and he says for for the viewers he says for your friendships people can see in you this hope this 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 the energy of love which is what everyone is really searching for is love to feel love again and it he says you're right about it being there's a real need he says there's a real need for that feeling of love and he says but it's not going to happen with any one person. And he says, you know that you find that through yourself and your own, he says, journey. He's pulling the, the word out of me, I think, journey, because I don't know that he would say journey, especially because it's another band. <laughs> journey, your supply of air. Who knows who that's a reference to? That was just me adding that because it's funny. Your supply of air, what band would that be? Put that in the comment below. <laughs> See, I like this. This is a fun connection and it's real. He says, you have to love yourself enough 
to recognize that when someone is asking something of you or they're upset with you about something that it's really not about you, it's about them. What they're when they're expressing something towards you, it's about their need. He says you got to you got to you got to realize, you got to find in that emotion that you feel. He said, you're not going to be logical. He's like, you're not going to be logical and use your brain about this. You're not going to be all psychology based. He's like, you're not going to be all psychological about this. He says, you're just not going to be smart about it because you're going to feel the intensity of what they're bringing to you. And he says, but you can't accept it. You can see it and then look up at their face don't just accept it point blank in the heart validate them he says validate that person by looking at their face imagine their face instead of instantly connecting and having a reaction he says stop stop look up look up to their face look up to them their identity and recognize that they have this this is theirs and it, this is beautiful. He says, this is beautiful. It's like a gift for you to recognize that there is so much trust. They look at you and they have so much trust and they see love in you and they see hope in you and light in you. And in that moment, you want to protect your hope and your light and your love. And so you want to just go, Ugh! and you're like, oh my gosh. And it sometimes it breaks through, he says, and it attaches to something in you that what you would consider, he said, Bridget, you'd use the word trigger. So I'm going to say trigger, but it pulls out in you something that feels icky. That doesn't feel, he doesn't say icky. <laughs> you don't say icky. He says, <laughs> sorry, he doesn't use the word icky. That's me. He's like, that's a Bridget word. That's a, that's a Bridget word. <laughs> pulls out something in you that you detest, you despise, you hate. You hate. It pulls out something in you that's like a fire poker and then it pokes back at you. So your own thing is is coming out and it's like stabbing you in the heart. Not in the back, he says. Not in the back. Not in the back. In the heart. It's like stab, stab, stab. Causing you pain. And so what you're really doing is adding some pain in you is coming out to connect to their pain and make it a big, huge deal when... It's not your deal. This isn't yours. <laughs> this isn't yours. And you're going to get confronted. He says, you're going to get confronted. You're going to get confronted. But you got it. He's like, I would say, he said, he says, look up. He said, look at their face. Look at their individual identity. Look at their independence. If you accept their pain, if you accept their perspective and their view, just accept it. Like the doors are wide open. It just comes right in. It's like, and he says, it's so funny because he literally shows me like, because I use this analogy in private session, like a screen door or a screen, like you can put a screen over your heart, open the window and still have stuff moving. You can put a screen over your head and filter. It's like filter, right? Because you don't want all the bugs where I live in Minnesota. There's tons of mosquitoes. So I'm like, keep the bugs out, but you can bring the air and the beautiful natural air, right? And he says, it's like that. It's like that. He says, that's every, you have to have that in order to stay healthy. He says, in order for you to then foster, you to draw into your life, to bring into, oh, attract. Oh, good work. Freddie just said attract. Yeah, like law of attraction stuff. He says, you attract then healthy, positive relationships. So he's like, if you want to attach to something, if you need to be connected to something, connect to that. But don't give people the, the um, he says, you degrade them. You degrade them when you accept their complaint, their defiance of their own light, their own source, their own power, their own love. When, when, you, when you accept that resistance, that resentment, and you allow within you to get activated by that, by their, their pain or their drama or their real, very real trauma. We're not judging the pain, by the way, you guys. It's just, it's all acceptable no matter what it is or what it's caused by or whatever. He, Freddie just says, it's a lack of love. It's just a lack of love. When you accept that, you invite lack of love inside of you. You put that, that toxin into your body unintentionally. And 
it's not healthy. It's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for them. He's like, it's not healthy for you. You're doing them a disservice by allowing yourself to be treated in a way and accepting the complaints, the negativity, the verbal thrashing, tongue thrashing that comes by accepting that by paying attention to it, by responding to it. We can't ignore it, you guys. Let's be honest. We're human beings and we can't ignore it. We're not made to ignore things. We're made to use our attention as a tool. So we can't ignore things. But we can, like Freddie says, be aware of what that energy is attached to. Look up at their face. Like, that is the best advice I think I've ever heard. I have ever heard. Have you ever heard any, as an empath, don't just accept the feelings as point blank. Look up at the face, look up at the identity, look up at the ownership of that information, that energy, that emotion. And if we are being, we are wanting to react, we're being pulled out. How do we, how do we, how, how do we do that? Like if we, okay, we're like going to have reactions. We're going to have reactions. We're going to have some feels about other people's stuff. Like when somebody says something to me, I want to just set them straight. And I really, it takes a lot to resist the urge to, because let me just say, I can be very clever in my responses. I grew up in a very sarcastic family and I could nail somebody to the wall. I could give them a tongue lashing. <laughs> but I really resist the urge to do that. I'll type it up and then I'll delete it and then I'll just delete, block, ban the person. Okay. That's how I handle it. <laughs> Probably not the healthiest way. He's like, oh no. He says, Bridget, why would you say it's not healthy? That's exactly healthy. That's exactly healthy. You acknowledge how you feel. He said, that's how you respond. Oh my gosh. He's like, you're doing it. You're doing it. Give yourself more credit. I'm like, oh. He says, you're the masterful coach. <laughs> I'm like, oh, am I really? Because sometimes I don't feel so masterful and I do not feel like a very good coach. I need a whistle. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Hello, sunshine. Let's breathe it in. <sighs> Allergy season. <laughs> I gotta be silly. I feel like my nose is running. Is it? I hope not. Okay. <laughs> it's probably just some water running. Okay. So I just said it. I just said it. So talk to us about this. Talk to us about this. He says, ignoring isn't healthy. He said, being ig ignoring ignorance <laughs> The same, like extension of the same word. It's not healthy. That whole, and he's like, ignorance is bliss. He said, yes, until it bites you, until you want to actually do something for yourself that's per, um, prominent, where you're really fulfilling a purpose, a passion. You care so deeply about something and you want to express it or share it. He said, he says, um, it doesn't work to ignore it. You can't ignore it. You can't because he says when you're so passionate and you're so committed and you are dedicated to sharing the messages and sharing the inspiration and hope, he says, hope, that's your thing. You, he's like, Bridge, you talk about hope all the time. I know, Fred. I know. That's my thing, you guys. Seriously. I've said before to many life coaches before that I've, I've chatted with, if I had a product, it would be hope. It is. It just is. Here it is in a box. Open it up. Just receive it. It's free. Take it. He says, the energy of that, he says, is going to have an equal balanced um, dark side, really, like for lack of a better term, shadow side, a part that's, that's not, that is as equally challenging to you, as equally challenging, he says, because that just fortifies your commitment and dedication to what you love. He said, so you will be challenged. There will be darkness. There will be negativity. There will be people that misunderstand you, but that's not your goal. Your goal is not to be understood. That's not your goal. Your goal is to what? Well, my goal is to deliver, to deliver the hope to the people who are ready to receive it. Not everybody that wa is watching this video is ready to receive that, you know, and start on that journey which is why I created my Fairy Grasshopper channel in the first place. That's how I started. Like I, that channel has been up since 2012 where I share inspiring insights, meditation, all sorts of stuff that I just fills my heart, you know? Above Life Channel is very focused and very specific and Fairy Grasshopper is this buffet and I like it that way, you know? He says, so you're going to equally get the shadows and that doesn't mean what you're doing is wrong or bad. It doesn't mean you're not doing things right. He says, stop judging yourself in your heart. That's one of the best things you can do is start loosening up the judgment on yourself. 
what other people say to you or, or show back or throw at you isn't about you, it's about them. And so then in order to know what's about you and what's yours, you got to know yourself. He's like, that's where intuition comes and that's where you got to focus on your spirit. He says, and just remember that the ultimate goal is love. Everybody wants love to feel it, to receive it, to be swimming in it, to use it. Like he's like literally shows me a big swimming pool and swimming around in love. And it's like light pink, love, love, swimming around in love. Now that's awesome. This is, has been, this has been such an interesting video. <laughs> this has been such an interesting channeling. I've rather enjoyed this. It's very personal. It's a very personal one. Thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. I want to talk with you more about empath stuff. If you guys have questions about that, about empath, being an empath and being a sensitive person, put them in the comments below because that's something I'd like to explore more deeply and, and bring it into um, a space that's more uh, meaningful for you specifically. So I hope you've enjoyed this channeling with Mr. Freddie Mercury from the afterlife. Empath to empath, I very much appreciate it. Hey, I hope I've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope, maybe encouraged you to stand up for yourself too. Because it really doesn't matter what other people think of you, it matters what you think of you. And I'm at the point where I need to make sure that I am thinking of what matters to me, which is my integrity and my personality. I have a quirky personality, I totally do. And that is starting to come through on Above Life Channel and I'm not gonna be all professional and buttoned up and I'm gonna you know, wear my hoodies and be comfortable and Enjoy the channeling, because that's the point, is to really enjoy this life, isn't it, after all? It certainly is. It's your life, after all, now. It's yours. Okay, that's a big thing, right? It's your life. So live it. You've got to just live it. That's what I intend to do. Hey, thank you so much for being here and watching until the end of this video. I totally appreciate you. I'll be hearting those comments. You better bet I will be. Thanks for being here.